then what? If you all talk at once in harmony, it'll be a beautiful thing. But, uh, hey, we we're doing fine backstage. We come out here and everything's quiet. You know? <laughs> <laughs> point these cameras in your face. There was a lot of talk back there. I think we should start with the <laughs> eldest, uh, you know, of the bunch. Is that you? No, <laughs> wait, man. No, it's, it's the other race. The, the, <laughs> this is the first of the breed. And the first of the breed. The, 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 the last over there. Yeah. You're the middle man. <laughs> just so we can set the record straight, they just want to know about how you, you know, hired Willie. So we want it down on tape. Well, <laughs> we, Johnny Paycheck at that time was Donnie Young. Donnie Young. And I had an altercation. And uh, you had what? An altercation. <laughs> altercation. <laughs> Discussion. So he decided he wanted to go somewhere else, go to work. And, and Willie was starving to death, and I knew he played was a good musician. I was worrying for him. He knew I was starving to death. <laughs> what were you writing for, for his him? publishing company over there? Oh, you were writing for him? Oh yeah, yeah I got his best. What song. years was that? What'd you get? What did he write? Oh, crazy and things like that. Nightlife. What years? Him and fourteen others on Nightlife. What year? <laughs> what year was that? You know? What? That I came to write. <laughs> Up there. Who am I? I don't know. <laughs> the year when I went to work writing for Panther Music, what year was that? I was in the late 50s. And then I went to work for you, though, as, as, on the road playing bass. Right. Had to be pretty close after that. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, were you a bass six, player by the way? Yeah, I think so. Did you Smith play wasn't known for giving no. a lot of money for his writers anyway. <laughs> Ray, no. Well, what, the, the money that I was making, Hank Cochran gave me his raise. He was supposed to. <laughs> He was supposed to get a $50 a week raise, and so he talked Hal Smith into giving me that $50. At least that's his story. <laughs> <laughs> but then you, you were not a bass player when you joined his band. Absolutely well, we didn't, we didn't spread that word around a lot. But, <laughs> but Ray called me and said, can you play bass? And I said, sure, can everybody? <laughs> you should have seen him in paycheck uniform. It was a little small? Oh, it was a little small. It was one of those nudie rhinestone things. It's pink. And it was, it was pink. Oh, yeah. And uh, blue, uh, all those sparkly colors and things. Oh, yeah, we had everything. Yeah. <laughs> that kind of explains what happened to you. Yeah. I mean, that's my so first. I ain't wearing these pink suits. <laughs> um, but, uh, um, so you went out and road play with Ray, and uh, that's how you know, of course, him, and then Haggard. When did you run into these two guys? You're the young youngster of the bunch. Well, I remember meeting Willie at his house in, in Nashville, uh, I think in 1964, at a poker game that was going on out there. Still going on. And uh, you know, I met Ray, I think in 1966, on a, we did about 35 days together on a tour. And then, uh, you know, we've our lives have touched each other's lives many times over the years. We're well, talking about Dewey Groom today. You remember Dewey? Groom? Absolutely. <laughs> the Longhorn Ballroom. At the Longhorn Ballroom, and the lovely our, man, lovely gentleman. <laughs> he was partners with Jack Ruby. Yeah. yeah. Well, now I worked for Jack Ruby. So. I'm Which was the worst? Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> Groom didn't go to jail. Yeah, that's true. He's smarter. <laughs> yeah. But not work for both of them. He was all right, but no, I love you. Know, uh, yeah. That ranch house was Bob Wells' ranch house. He meant well, yeah. didn't he? Yeah, he did. He and just I worked with Bob and for Bob there. You worked at the Bob Wells' ranch house. Yeah, whenever he and the band went on the road, I got me and my band. Oh uh, yeah, Gimble worked there too. I know he told me. Oh that. yeah, and then Gimble went on the road with it, Melody Masters or something, whatever the name yeah. was. was. Now you and, uh, not, not your guy in the middle, but you and uh, Mr. Haggard over there have employed more fiddle players than the Dallas Symphony Orchestra <laughs> in your day. Uh, you want to just speak a little bit about fiddlers uh, in, in, in a nice way. Well, it proves we don't like banjo pickers. <laughs> <laughs> Let's associate stalkers. Or something. <laughs> what does a, a banjo and an AK-47 have in common? Or what's the difference between a banjo and an AK-47? Oh, well, you got me there. <laughs> a banjo only, uh, an AK-47 only repeats itself 4,700 times a minute. I'm sorry. What perfect pitch, you know, when you throw a banjo in a trash can and it... Look in the camera when you get the punchline. Yeah, go ahead. And it hits a band leader. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I hope there ain't no banjo players gonna say this. <laughs>